Greetings everyone. My name is Maurice Jones. I am the founder and president of Graceland Ministries. Today, the Graceland Ministries team will present an assessment of a video from the noted theologian and Christian apologist, Dr. William Lane Craig, in which he attempts to disprove the doctrine of the rapture. We pray that you will join us and the approved workers of God as we wait for the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't think Christians should believe in the rapture because it's not a biblical doctrine. This is a doctrine that was invented in the 19th century by James Darby in Ireland. Right off the bat, we can see that the title question of this video is misleading. No, the rapture is not a biblical doctrine by that standard. Neither is the Trinity. Neither the word rapture nor the word Trinity actually appear in the Bible, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we shouldn't believe and teach the idea of the rapture the same as we believe and teach the idea of the Trinity. This sleight of hand allows Dr. Craig to a priori reject or rule out in advance the possibility that Darby's view is biblical rather than providing counter arguments against it, and it misleads his audience into doing the same. The more appropriate title should be, Is Darby's view of the rapture a biblical doctrine? which addresses the relevant question of whether the idea of the rapture as articulated by John Darby should be believed and taught within Christianity. And when we were on our Irish uh, speaking tour a couple years ago, we actually uh, visited and spent a few nights at Parse Court where Darby used to hold his Bible studies with the rich and the noble there. Um, and the rapture doctrine was developed, but it, it is not a doctrine that is affirmed historically by any of the great confessions of the Christian church, Catholic, Orthodox, or Protestant. Here Dr. Craig asserts that the idea of the rapture should be rejected because it is not a doctrine taught by the early church. A more accurate statement would be that the early premillennial church fathers failed to teach 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, which was given as a mystery to Paul by Jesus. But more importantly, according to Dr. Craig's view of eschatology, the church today is living in the symbolic seventh day of the Sabbath creation, also known as the tribulation period. Assuming this view is correct, we should be currently awaiting the event described in Revelation 19.11, which is the second coming of Christ. This means that Dr. Craig's eschatology or eschatological perspective is neither premillennial, postmillennial, or amillennial, but rather he sits in between the ah and the post-mill perspectives. This is certainly a viewpoint that no fathers of the early church confess or confirm. So, if Craig wants to dismiss Darby's view of the rapture based on that qualification alone, he must also dismiss his own view of eschatology. It's based upon a misinterpretation of certain New Testament passages where Paul talks about how the Lord will return and we who are believers will be gathered to meet him in the air. Now, the question is, when does this occur? Darby thought that this was a sort of secret return of Christ prior to the second coming of Christ on the Judgment Day. The whole Darby thing is an ad hominem argument. Darby believed that the rapture occurred after the cross, or the 69th week, and before the ten tolls of Daniel 2.41, the 70th week, and the appearance of the man of sin as stated in 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 2 through 4. He did not follow some young lady's view of the Antichrist in her vision. Now, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 58, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, but that when the mortal put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where's your sting? O grave, where's your victory? So it is clear that there cannot be mortal flesh and blood members of the body of Christ on the earth at the time of the second coming. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10, and Revelation 19, verse 11. Only after the mortal put on immortality, relative to the members of the body of Christ, Daniel's ten toes and the two witnesses and two beasts, can Christ return and set up his kingdom. This is consistent with the text of Revelation 19, 11, which describes the Son of Man returning with believers, but not for believers. So then, if Dr. Craig is to believe that the rapture occurs at the same time as the second coming rather than before, or that there is no distinct rapture event at all, that he must account for how believers are taken out of the world, 
meaning how the mortal put on immortality in order to be with Christ upon his return and reign with those other sheep, Matthew 25, 31 through 46, that will inherit the kingdom of God. But there's absolutely no New Testament reason for separating this event from the second coming of Christ. When you read Jesus' Olivet Discourse in Mark 13 and you read Paul's teaching in light of that, it seems quite clear to me at least that Christ will return at the end of human history. This will be his um, second coming. His first was um, the one that ended with his crucifixion and resurrection. That was his first coming. His second coming will be when he comes on the day of the Lord for judging the world and determining people's final state. So when Christ returns on the judgment day, he will bring with him the souls of the departed saints. And then those who are alive at the time of his return will be gathered to meet them uh, in the air and accompany the Lord then to the earth for the final judgment. Here Dr. Craig admits that the rapture must occur with the second coming of Christ. This is not consistent with 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 2 through 4, where Paul writes that that day, meaning the second coming, will not occur until there is the man of sin being revealed, meaning the Antichrist, Matthew 24 through 15, the abomination of desolation of Daniel. It is clear from this verse that the man of sin will be revealed after the rapture event, but before the second coming. So it is impossible for the rapture event and the second coming to occur back to back. And so it seems to me that it is illusory to invent this secret preemptory return of Jesus prior to his second coming. In this video, a philosopher like Dr. Craig should have applied the principle of identity in order to see that the rapture and the second coming cannot be the same event. The biblical passages describing the two events have some similarities, but have too many differences to be considered parallels. If Dr. Craig had a text that could place Daniel 2.41 in the past, then Dr. Craig would be able to argue that 1 Corinthians 15.50-58 is exhaustive, but such a text does not exist. His teaching relative to Jesus and Paul is not clear and sharp, but vague and dismissive because he does not have an exegetical methodology that enables him to incorporate all of the prophetic verses of the Bible relative to the end times into a single eschatological perspective. Thank you for listening to this video from Graceland Ministries. If you enjoyed this content and are interested in hearing more on this topic or other matters of biblical doctrine, please visit our website or follow us on social media.